how do we influence the country, put pressure on the politicians, and really get people talking about social care. Um, since I, I joined the team sort of 18 months ago, uh, I've been humbled by what I see that our, our guys do every single day, but appalled with the way in which the sector is treated. Uh, local authorities do their best, but they're obviously limited uh, in terms of the funds they get and the cutbacks they're asked to make. And most local authorities are putting 60 or 70 percent into funding um, and would love to put more in, but they have not got the resources. So this isn't about our efficiency. It's not about finding a magic solution with local authorities. It's about changing the way in which society prioritizes social care, and that has to be about galvanizing politicians and making it a priority for them. Um, and what we really now need to have is a very clear narrative, a very clear call to action. We've got to really engage with the media in a way that the sector is not particularly good at doing, and we have got to really turn the heat on um, the people that can make a difference. Now, if you look around this room, there's a huge number of leaders that in their own way can make an impact in their community. If you extend that to your families, if you extend that to the people that um, you support and manage, if you extend that to the people that we support and care for and their families, there is an army of people that were, are within our grasp if we can really ask for their help, and that's just galvanizing the, the army that we could be in control of directly before we start breaking into uh, the, the consciousness of the general public. The NHS has 1.2 million staff. Social care has between 1.5 and 1.6 million uh, staff. We are uh, underpaid compared to the most junior roles in the NHS by some 20 to 30 percent. The, the pensions that uh, the NHS worker gets is three times better than the pension that you get if you're in social care. That cannot possibly be allowed to continue. So our vision is to call for social care to have parity with the NHS in terms of both funding and public support. There's been a recent campaign uh, that has just been started by the government trying to encourage more people into social care, which is great. But we have to change the way in which people think about how social care is funded, how it is joined and linked to the NHS, and how much better a society we could have if you really had a true integrated health and social care system. Obviously, we're under no illusion. This is a really big ask. There's a reason why this is such a political hot potato, for want of a better phrase, because really nobody does have the answers to some of this. And that is where organisations like us do really have to step up and create that debate, start to making some suggestions, making those solutions. We've got some really clear objectives around what we are going to do. And one of the first things is we have to become a more vocal and outward facing organisation. I think for me, this is probably one of the most important parts and certainly for me personally it is. How do we create a genuine recognition of the value that carers, support workers, people who work in this industry genuinely bring to society? You know, we talk about the 1.6 million people working in social care, all the people they support, all their families. We have to galvanise that kind of support because we're talking about a hell of a lot of people who could really be changing this debate. And for me, it is only going to be through really getting us together and really galvanising and I'm really just championing it that we are going to see some of that change. So how are we going to do it? Essentially, what we want to do is have a full-scale PR campaign that really grabs national media attention. Press. We want national press, The Guardian, the BBC, Sky News, absolutely everyone, to say, we need to listen and hear from Mark. We need to listen and hear from Community Integrated Care. What they have to say is exactly what this sector needs. We need to be strategic in our political campaigning. We need to be engaging government on the biggest issues. At the moment, everyone's just blinded by Brexit. We know that. But very soon, that's going to clear up and they're going to want to put their pin to the mast and say, this is the thing that we're known for. 
We want to make sure that we're the voice that they come to. We want to make sure that we're getting the right funding and the right models of care to make sure we can make a difference. The campaign is going to make a great deal of noise and hopefully starting quite soon. So on the screen you can see a selection of the types of media that we're going to be going after and it's everything from the Financial Times to the Today programme to this morning. Uh, it's not about a one-off campaign that's here today and gone tomorrow. It's about using the media to build a really strong sense of momentum that wins the hearts and minds of the general public on the issue of social care. And that will help create the conditions that we need for political change. And actually, one slot in particular we've talked about, we would love to see Mark on the panel of question time because we think he'd be absolutely fantastic fighting Social Care's corner. Uh, but it's, again, about a very proactive campaign. Uh, on the political side of things, and this very much integrates with the media side of things, we are looking to be engaging with decision makers at absolutely all levels. And we're going to be doing this by asking questions in Parliament, by briefing officials, by bringing, and I think this is really important, bringing the voices of community integrated care, the staff, the carers, the families, into the political arena, because they can be some of the most powerful advocates for change. So in a year's time, we're hoping that it will set out a new fresh vision for the sector. We want to become a thought leader and a lead in light for policy change. We want to have made really good inroads into the campaign and for, for, just, just for fear of funding. And essentially, we want to champion carers and gain more recognition for the fantastic work they do. And that's probably the main thing because, you know, you see very much a case of, in the NHS, everyone's a case of, you know, it's junior doctors go on strike. It's the fantastic NHS, the heroes in the NHS. And they are heroes, but our guys are heroes too. And we want them to be here. We want them to be able to say, yes, I am recognised. And that's why we've got the We Dare Award. And some of the stories we're seeing on there are absolutely fantastic. But now we need you. It, it, it's not a case of, you know, this is the comms team, this is going to be PR, this is going to be Mark. It has to be every single person in this organisation getting behind this campaign. And this is what we've seen so far. Like, everyone has been behind. We did. Everyone has, across the UK, off their own back, been taking pictures, videos of everyone shouting, screaming, writing in the sand, we there. And we want everyone to hear us. You know, this, we don't want this just to live on Yammer. It needs to live in the public sphere. Everyone needs to go, wow, I want to be part of that. I want a badge. I want to be able to shout, we there. And I think that's where we look at it today. And, you know, this is the first time that we've brought all of our senior leaders together. And there's 400 of us here today. And together, we lead... 6,000 people in our charity. That's how many people we lead in this room. And together, we support over 3,500 people. So if you think about it, there's just shy of 10,000 people directly connected to our organization. Now, with that 10,000, each one of us knows 10 people who would get behind a campaign. We know 10 people who would say, do you know what, I'd support you. I'd support social care. Could be family, friends, could be partners. We, know, we all know 10 people. And if we add that 10 people to 10,000 of us, suddenly we have a network of 100,000 people who are directly connected to this organization, who are bought into this organization, and will help us lead this change. And obviously, I have to use Anfield, but you could, with 100,000 people, you can fill Anfield twice. And it is full every match day. But yeah, you can fill it twice. <laughs> You can see my seat down there. But, but it, 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 seriously, on 100,000 people, if we get that many pet, um, petitions online, they must debate your petition. They must debate. Parliament will hear us on 100,000 people, and that is very easily achievable. That is not just a case of, oh, we hope 100,000. That's just what, who is connected to our organisation, and we will achieve that. But we need you. So can everyone stand up for me, please? Come on, don't be shy, stand up. So I know you've all done this before, but maybe you've done it in kind of your services or in your smaller sessions. But I want everyone now looking at each other. Just, just look at each other, come on, just look at each other. I want everyone, come on guys, I want everyone after free, after free to shout, we dare. Are you ready? One. Two, three. We did. All right, one more time. Come on. And come on, Mark was the only one who did that. <laughs>
Come on, guys. All right, after three. One, two, three. We did. All right, now I want you to shout it back to me after the state one statement. Do you dare to change the social care system? We dare. Like, let's go one more time. Do you dare to change the social care system? We dare. Fantastic, guys.